Hey, ladies and gentlemen, this is Christelle Martinet, and with or without glasses, you will recognize me. Um, I'm here with a conversation with Parvin Babi, and um, the strange thing about um, this soul is that she popped up about four months ago. Um, it was around the time that I had put up, I think, the third um, uh, channeling session with uh, Sushant, and uh, it was it always comes as if it's it were knocking, you know, a knock, you know, and I'm halfway between sleeping and waking up, and um, and the name comes, the name comes. And so I just put it aside and let it be because I had other things going on. And then uh, the messages kept coming out more and more. And so I've come out now with there, there's something that she has, is trying to say. And of course, for those of you who uh, don't know anything about her life, I will um, talk about that a little bit. And it's things that is are commonly known. And then um, intersperse that with questions that I've got from you. Of course, if you've written questions late last night, or um, that's a Thursday or a Friday, I won't have those questions. And I will be reading questions, naming the person, but I only take questions that are not doubled. So if I don't read yours, that means it's included in another question. So let's start. And um, first of all, I have to say that as everyone describes her, as the press has always described her, she's like a, a fly, like a like very very light. Her her soul is extremely light, and uh, apparently uh, uh, she was very thin um, toward the end of her life. Now, she was a film actress. Okay, she died in um, uh, uh, in January of two thousand five. Uh, 20th of January for to be precise and she was an Indian film actress and at the time uh, uh, part of her life she was a model as well and she was best known uh, we could say for her roles in Hindi films throughout the 70s and uh, the 80s and throughout her career she was known as a glamorous you know a glamorous fashion icon and was one of the highest paid actresses during that time. Now, what, what is known about her and, and what captivated the, the Indian imagination was that um, she was a dazzling screen presence. Okay, this is why she uh, uh, hit, you know, she, she, she made an impression on the Indian population so much. Uh, she dazzled on the Ita the Indian silver screen at a time when actresses and actors were more modest, especially women, were coy uh, during her time. She was sensual. She was sensual. She was glamorous. And she was successful. Um, her personal life was in the news as much as her um, as her public life was um, and um, she was known for her sort of uh, bohemian lifestyle her bohemian choices and these doomed romances okay it, it seems uh, it seems the order of the day the more beautiful you are the more doomed your love life is um, later in her life her health issues became to dominate the headlines I'd like to take a few questions now. Um, a couple of the questions that I had. I have Tanya here, Bhatia. Tanya Bhatia asks, um, I would like to ask Parvin Babi the role of Amitabh Bashan in her life, in her fall, and in Bollywood today. No, just ask about him in my life. I don't now particularly want to respond about my fall as you ask. He, for me, was a very important person, a very important man. And 
I have to stress that as important as he was, as damning as he was for my life, not my career. Okay. Um, then we have Dipashki Mukherjee, who, excuse me for making a mistake in pronunciation, asks, who was responsible for your death and the cause of death? I'd like to say that society was the cause for my death. At a time that I was involved with a married man and it became known, I dare you all to check the news about that time. You will see that it was at that time that I was declared as being schizophrenic. Many news headings and articles talked about bipolarity. I have to say that when I was angry, I was angry. When I was sad, I was sad. And when I was happy, I was happy. If these things occurred within one day, people have a tendency to give you a label. But this was not what happened. My so-called mental illness came to the fore, came in the news headings at the same time as my relationship was with a married man. Okay, so there's a partial response there, um, but we'll get to that. Tara B. Tara B. asks, Harparvin, you were an icon of your time, so beautiful and successful. What led your life to turn so tragic? One life lesson you would want us to know, what is that? May you find peace. Tragedy set in my life when love came and love went, when ir irreproachable, no, irreconcilable love came and it was not possible in my life. My demise was a cocktail of events. Depression for love lost and also my career and fame lost due to the credibility that I had lost with the public. At that time, I was also afraid, I feared, actually, I feared for my life because I started speaking out. But I would not like to speak unkindly of a person I so much loved. <laughs> you also ask one life lesson you would like us to know. 
there are many lessons. One is, and the most important, is speak out when you feel the need to communicate. Communicate your truth always and never have fear at the hands of authority or at the hands of power, especially in your context, if it is a home context or a working context or a gathering simply of friends. She has this melancholic type of uh, 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 air about her. I have this melancholy about. It's not nostalgia. There is a sadness. Uh, it's what the um, what the Portuguese called fado. You know this this sort of heavy melancholy without being depressed, but a melancholy, just the same. Then I have Sinhal Sinhal. Tamhankar, who asks, here's my question. In the Hindu religion, various rituals are done to bring peace to the soul ha that has reparted, departed. Do any of these rituals hold any significance? Yes, of course. Rituals are the salt of life and the spice of life, they are what makes life possible. They are traditions, they reflect our culture and they reflect who we are. Yes, indeed, they are effective just as effective as are chanting, invocations, affirmations, and what people call prayers. Okay. Then I have um, Sarita Lobchan. Sarita asks, Hello, beautiful Parvin Babi. Who, what should be an individual's purpose to worship, worship any form of deities. Is it an act of selfishness one, when one prays and asks deities to fulfill their needs or wants? How do deities take human form on praying and worshiping them? She, she's telling me there's a bit of confusion between the deity part and the human element. Praying and requesting things for ourselves are fundamental. You need to pray and request what your needs are and speak to the divine whatever form they come to you. If, while you do this and you meditate, you actually see the form as represented in photographs or figurines or small statues, this is how they want to impulse to represent themselves to you. Keep those questions coming, she said. Just keep those questions coming. The questions that Sarita speaks of, that is. Um, and now, let's go back and talk about her a little bit more, and then I'll take questions. I need, every now and then, I need a break between one uh, activity and the other, um, just to clear my mind from the last questions. So, um, Bobby's life has been 
like I mentioned in the beginning, very well documented by the media. And um, she remained unmarried after a string of relationships with Amitabh Bashchan that was mentioned before. Uh, Kabir Bedi, Dani Denzongpa, and Mahesh Bhatt. She was diagnosed, that's why the, the mention was made about her mental health. She was diagnosed with paranoid schizophrenic, schizophrenia, where she came to attention following various incidents due to her, I have a fly, <laughs> it's, it's a fly around to me, <laughs> where she came to, the, to attention um, following different incidents due to her mental health, as well as a, a diabetes. So there's this mental health issues and uh, diabetes. And on the 20th, as I said, the day she uh, born, uh, died, the 20th of January in 2005, she allegedly died of multiple, multiple organ failure. Now, Parvin was much talked about um, as a star in her heydays, during those days. I mean, if you think of it, she was very, very young when she passed. Um, yet much of her life is still an enigma. It's a mystery. Um, Karishma Upadhyay, in an interview, talks about uh, her book, Parvin Babi, A Life, and how she attempted to unravel the stories uh, uh, about the, li the star's life. Let's see if there's more questions that we can respond to. Uh, Deepika Singh asks, Hello, Parveen, Madam. I have so many questions. Qu a question placed on priority basis. Uh, Christelle, you can choose all of them or some of them. One, what realizations do you have about your tragic life? Two, what was your life really was your life really under threat by your colleagues or was it just a schizophrenic attack? Three, were you any threat to the top influential Bollywood biggies, which ultimately dragged you to deteriorating, deteriorating mental health? And last, do you need any help? So let's take the first question here. What realizations do you have about your tragic life? The lesson was, as I mentioned, that I needed to speak out. And I realized now that I should have done that before falling in love, falling at the mercy of love and becoming weak because of those emotions. Ah, oh, it's so, so difficult, you know. Um, what was, was your life really under threat by your colleagues or was it just a schizophrenia, a schizophrenic attack? Yes, indeed. Yes, yes, indeed. You, as she's saying, you hit it on the nose. You hit it on the nose about the colleagues Yes, about the colleagues. It wasn't exactly one or more colleagues. It, were, it was Bollywood as a whole that pressured every actor and actress who became famous. But I again stress that it was my love for a person who was not free that ultimately caused my demise. No, I may have seemed crazy. I may have seemed ill, but I was not mentally ill. I was not mentally ill. There were plots, I'd like to say, She's, she's saying plots, she's saying another word. Um, stories, a mixed stories, negotiations. She's saying there's, there were negotiations between 
people I became involved with, men I became involved with, and the press. Actually, two men I was involved with banded together and plotted against my sanity. And this was the beginning of the end for me. I was weak. I did have diabetes, but it was not diabetes that ultimately brought on my demise. I was not assassinated, no, but I was the object of scrutiny to the point of annihilating my very existence. And if this is the case, then I can say I was a victim of societal pressures and two men's plotting against me. Hmm. Okay. Um, uh, were you any threat to top biggies? And uh, was that ultimately the cause of your um, deteriorating mental health? She's saying absolutely not. No, no, no. She's, you know, her hands and up in the air. No, no, no. Um, she has a um, a chemise, what I call a chemise dress with a cinched at the waist. It's white and flowing, um, cupping her breasts with very s slim um, shoulder uh, straps. And she's uh, very, very thin and waving and flapping her hands. No, 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 I was not a threat to any Hollywood beaky or smally, she's <laughs> saying. I was not. But I was a threat to a man who was not free. And this caused, ultimately, my downfall. Hmm. I wonder if we'll get that. We'll get to that. We'll get that answer. Chocolate Thunder. Chocolate Thunder asks, can you ac explain the actual origins of uh, the COVID-19 virus and what is really fly, what is really going on and is the concept of a new world order an actual reality? Mm, we've got lots of questions here. Um, COVID. Theories about COVID-19 and how it began were mentioned in all countries of the world. But in my truth, and I will say this once only, my truth, not your medium's truth, I guess she's talking about me, my truth is that it occurred, excuse me, excuse me, I have to um, get rid of this fly before doing anything else. I think I've got rid of the fly, but let me, let me just... question was about COVID, COVID and what is actually going on and the concept of a new world order. Yes, my truth is it was created at the hands of both the United States and China. When I say hands, I speak of a laboratory and together it was created. Here too, there was a backstory that we will never understand. By we, I mean you and I will never understand why, but the idea 
was to create a threat, but the threat got away with itself. It became a reality and went out of control. You ask about a new world order and I believe the questions are linked and it is not by chance you asked both of them. The notion of a new world order, old order is as old as the beginning of time. People thirsty for power have always thought that by creating an order, it would give them power. You will find that this is also linked to other issues of aliens and alien abductions. Wow, she's throwing that out at us, throwing that at us. Um, I have another question by Ira Ira, or Ira Ira. She said, hi, since so a soul can take numbers of reincarnation, reincarnation Ira has written in block letters. I don't know what that means here, but we'll hear her. Just wonder, does soul remember all their physical appearance and their family members? I think that maybe the the numbers might not be numbers, but members. But I don't. I don't know. We'll see. Yes, very much indeed. She's jumping up and down, jumping up and down. This white white chemise dress is flashing up and down. It is. It is true. When I passed, I did not. I was not a soul. A, an earthbound soul. I passed and my relatives, my ancient family members, my forebears were there to greet me. Do I still have a memory? Does my soul, does my soul still have a memory of earthly relatives? Yes, of course. And I communicate with them. I communicate with them all the time. Sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. But I have a straight line communication to a specific family member that is open and in tune with me now. Wow. Then I have um, Nurturing Minds by Shilpa Don Dondarekar, who asks, could you please ask Parveen if she has, if she was given drugs which she didn't know at the time? Interesting questions. No, not a drug. I was given so many drugs that I did not even know. I was being given. This occurred at the time of my of my definition of how people defined me as being mentally ill. I was in and out of hospital care, institutionalized, and in those periods, I was given so many things I can't even begin to list them. Can you understand now why I died of multiple organ failure? It was not only diabetes, but all the rest, 
together. Well, we got that out. Um, then the last question for this group, Amit Gildial asks, is the COVID situation in the world some karmic justice or is it nature's way of restoring balance or just to be taken as another accidental happening, another accidental occurrence? No, none of the, none of them. It is and was intentional, as I just said, on behalf of laboratory researchers who were, who had band together for the sole purpose of creating a world threat. Okay. All right. So let me get back. Um, let me get back to, um, to talking about her and, and just relaxing a while and getting my mind uh, cleared of the questions. Like I mentioned, um, few actresses and actors have captivated the uh, Indian imagination like Bar Parveen Babi did. She was such a, um, she was such a, um, a, a she, she, she just gave off light and her way of flaunting what she did was not common. Now we talked just before about, I, t I mentioned Karishma Upadhyay, uh, her, her book, and how her book had brought up a lot of answers about Parvin Bapi's um, uh, uh, book uh, because it covered her life from birth to death. And while um, the relationships were an important part of Parvin's life, um, there is a lot more to her life. There, in that book, there's information about her family, what she was like as a student, and so many other things. And one of the things that um, that she, the author of this book um, found was that by, through speaking to people that she knew and family members and and uh, interviews that she took on, uh, she she um, had recorded for her book, she found out that Bobby's. Um, Bobby's had a uh, photographic memory. And when you have a photographic memory, it means there are very few things that you forget when you conjure them up. And this is why, all right, she may have not been the best actress in, in the business, okay, she was just famous, but she was someone who memorized her dialogues very quickly. Um, a lot of her book, a lot of uh, Karishma's book talked about the mental illness. And there's a lot about her breakdowns um, and what she was like and the people around that saw her. When she left the industry, her family didn't know where she had disappeared to. She just left. So there's information about that in this book as well. There are details about the time she returned, right down to when she converted to Christianity. And she did, in fact, um, she did indeed um, uh, um, convert to Christianity. Sieda Fatima asks, uh, did you really used to see ghosts or dead people like Mahesh Bhatt said? Or did he cook up a false story against you? Did he spoil your life and your career? Again, someone hits it on the nose, she's saying, on the nose. He has done so much to ruin my career that I don't even like stem wasting time mentioning anything about this. Yes, I saw ghosts. Yes, I saw spirits. But everyone does. This was his way to denigrate me 
to remove credibility from my sanity. And yes, he damaged my career greatly. This man, Mahesh Bhattis, keep, keeps coming up. Um, another question comes from uh, Vibhuti Arora. Hello, Madam, uh, Mama, Mama Christel. I love that, Mama Christel. Hope you and your family are doing well. Thank you, they are. Please ask Parveen what is her advice to young girls who are too bold to take calculated decisions and risk themselves. Now, I, that, this seems like a contradiction here, but maybe Parveen are not bold enough, maybe. I'm not sure. Well, let's see if Parveen, uh, Parveen uh, gets that. They need to take risks. They need to be bold. They need to speak out. And not only young women, all women need their own voice and not the voice of someone else. It is difficult, especially in a culture that stifles the voice of women, even today. But one suggestion, I'm urging you, it is not a suggestion. Speak your mind. The world needs you. Okay. Um, then I have um, Crystal Maiden says, is time travel possible? Has anyone time to travel with or without a machine? Oh, she's getting so exciting, you know, as, as if she were bouncing around on a trampoline. She's saying, Lord, Lord, Lord of the flies, as she's saying. She's she's ecstatic here. I, I can, can concentrate on, on her. Okay. Yes, you time travel all the time during every waking moment of your day. There are timelines that we are unaware of. We act and exist in different timelines with different people and many of the same people. You remember at all any dream that you may have had when you were part of one of, she's saying the Chinese dynasties. Can you remember a time like that? Or can you remember when you were living in the Stone Age or in a futuristic spacecraft where travel was so rapid. These are, yes, dreams, but they are dreams that exist. And when something exists in our mind, it is real. My example to you is when you read a book or a novel, but not at the movies. When you read, your mind reads letters and words on a page, but your emotions are created from the imagination of what occurs and the visualization of the pictures you create from those words. They are real for you. Then we have um, 
we've got Lipika Chatterjee asks, what was your life purpose and how much of it were you able to achieve? How could you have lived for a different outcome? Was getting into the movies part of the planned destiny or would you have avoided the misery if you did not get into the movies? Okay, so there are a couple of questions here, perhaps a little jumbling up, but let me see. Um, Let's talk about the life purpose. When you ask, she's saying a lesson. She's talking about a lesson, life lessons. It's, it was not my purpose. She's saying it was a lesson, a life lesson that I chose for myself. One of the life lessons that I chose for myself was, my soul chose for myself, was to emotionally be capable of interacting with other humans even when my ideas were different from theirs. And you see that I died at an extremely early age and the lessons were barely even experienced. I now have the possibility to further that life lesson that my soul wants and wanted to experience during my lifetime then. Um, About the movies and getting into the movies and having um, the possibility to avoid the misery. No, that has nothing to do with misery. It could have been a supermarket. I could have worked in a shop. I could have been a waiter or or a waitress. I could have acted like a boy or a girl and people may have criticized me. It doesn't matter. My life lesson that I had chosen was for me to interact with other humans despite my differences and my seemingly crazy attitude. It was simply that I was different. This is hard to wrap your head around. Um, and I'm having trouble with it myself. But there's a, another question from Sutapa Chowdhury. Do you, uh, this little sound's going off, do you find your spiritual path, did you find your spiritual path when you left Bollywood? Was What was your state of mind before death? Uh, she's saying shame, shame. She's saying that she th- she left because of shame because she felt she was unable to continue with that lesson and the desired experience she wanted to she was overcome i was overcome by two men she's saying two men two men that ruined this lesson for me and i decided to leave my soul wanted to leave. Well, I hope the other questions will get a clarification with that. Um, let me go back and um, um, talk about the last things that were happening to her. Uh, she once claimed that Mr. Bashan had tried to kill her But it was later found that she was suffering from schizophrenia. This is what she was alluding to, probably. And according to her doctor, listen to this, the way uh, he put it. She was suffering from paranoid schizophrenia because of her failure in love and no support from her family. Okay, now, 
um, part of this could be true, part of it could be true, but it seems, at least to me, an outsider, that the two came up at the same time, this experience with uh, Bashan, Bashan, and that if she had a loved one with her, the doctor had continued thinking, who was concerned and compassionate, Perhaps it would have been possible to treat her illness and her life would have been different. Okay. And um, when she uh, died, she, in her tribute to Amitabh, um, she said that um, she was a great person and um, he would often visit her place as they belonged to the same social circle. And com commentating on the allegation, and it's, you know, the word allegation is just in itself is, is as if it weren't true, you know, the alleged. Um, what he said, he actually wrote it was, he said, the nature of her illness was such that she was terrified of people and was prone to all sorts of excessive delusions and hallucinations. Now, um, I'm going to go through the last questions that um, that we um, that I was given that I put together, and one is by Asak Asak S, who asks, "Was it schizophrenia, or were you surrounded by negative souls?" Oh, that is the question of the day. It was not schizophrenia at all. It was not schizophrenia at all. She's saying, no, no, no. It was those people around me who did not want me to speak out. That was the problem. That was the problem. Yeah, I guess that was the problem. And uh, Priya Sumit, 1208, and so and so on, asks, Hello, Christelle, please ask Parvin Babi that there are lo lots of people who died due to COVID and did not even get proper funerals. So what happens to their souls? Um, this happened all over the world. And India has a tradition of proper chants and worships done for the loved ones who pass. But in this present pandemic, nothing like this is possible for those who pass in hospitals and are taken directly to be cremated. Where do these souls go? Does such death fall under untimely death? Or these who have passed were destined to die like that? Do these souls find light and do they unite with the Almighty? Let's see about that. It is always as if they died natural deaths. The pandemic is part of nature today. And they are past, they have passed, and there is nothing specific here, but each and every person of those who have passed would have passed in the same way if it weren't a pandemic. She's saying this means She's making confusion here. Some of these souls are still earthbound, but it depends on what they were experiencing at the time and before their illness. Some are in the light and some, few really, are in darkness yet, but I have to exhort you, plead with you to continue your invocations for them because especially for those earthbound spirits, they may find a way to 
pass. And those in darkness still need to be brought to the light by suggesting they can do it and they will have a different experience. Your help is much needed that way. Well, that was very clear. Um, Kion, the Chow Chow, asked what had happened to her. Was she a bipolar? We asked, we've answered that. And uh, Depisha Shukshan, Shuhan said, um, was her schizophrenia related to her past life fear? And it wasn't. It wasn't schizophrenia at all. Um, Aisa says, why do an aliens abduct humans and how can we each prevent it? if we don't want contact with them? Are these aliens harmful to us? No, it is hardly preventable. She's smiling though when she's saying this. It has happened since the beginning of time. There were beings from other parts of the universe who have come and tried to influence consciousness on earth. Originally, aliens could be thought of as angels sent to alter humans consciousness. Now they have been influenced negatively and want information from humans concerning emotional life that they do not understand. They are not harmful, but they are only harmful because they cause fear and fear causes negativity. Hmm. Shaivya Saxena asked, what was your biggest mistake in your life? She's very clear about this. It's loving a married man, loving a married man. Um, Nats asks, will the world ever get rid of coronavirus? How much more destruction will this virus create in the world? No, no, and yes. That's two no's and one yes. It will be, it will be gone, but there will be other forms. So my response has to be that this is a new reality. You need to adapt and understand that it will pass when it needs to pass. Please consider it a mystery today, but in the near future, it will no longer be a mystery. Gary for Grace. Gary for Grace asks, please forgive me. Is it true another virus is coming soon and when? No, it is here already. It's already here. Mr. Gary, it is already here. Please, all of you, let me finish by saying that there is no need for fear at all, none at all. And put your faith in the hands of the divine. Goodbye. And she's flowing away. She's flowing away with this, this pinnacle, like a pinnacle uh, dress cinched at the waist, this white flowing dress. Um, this was, mel it started out very melancholy-like, but um, what came after was a sense of wanting to say something. She still, it sounds as if she still does not want to... Um, 
she talks about a married man. Uh, it could be uh, that about, about Ashan, Ashan, or Ashan, Ashan um, who was a married man at the time when uh, uh, she was with him. And his their relationship was um, um, well known, not well known, not even agreed upon. But um, this is uh, my feeling. And um, let's let's say that let's say that she indeed has found peace. But um, the idea of not naming what she's mentioning that you do mention the sin, but you don't mention the sinner. Well, that's that's an expression in Italian, actually, and. No good comes from pointing fingers, she's saying. Just remember not to be afraid. I'll take that as the final message. Thank you all for joining me, for your support with this channel. Um, I will be back um, and love to you all. Please have a nice weekend. Bye-bye.